All right, so I'm getting ready to do this long-term battery tester where I'm putting a lot of current on the 47 amp hour Ford Motor Company packs. And so I was looking at buying some uh, resistors so I could put a pretty healthy load on this. I wanted to do 94 amps. And so I was looking at using these wire wound resistors. This is a 25 ohm one, so it's much too high, but you can get them down to like about 0.1 ohms. Uh, but they really just don't handle that much heat and you have to derate them a lot and they're also expensive. Uh, and I realized that I just have uh, like 1500 feet of this four gauge wire, which will eventually become the LIBCM current cables when I sell all the kits or whatever. But for now, I just have it sitting on reels in the garage. So I said, okay, well, did some quick math here and four gauge wire is 248 and a half micro ohms per foot. And I wanna do 94 amps and I wanted to be able to go up and down a little bit too. So I cut 180 feet. My calculation is that I need 167 feet to hit 94 amps, which is 2C, it's a 47 amp hour battery. Uh, so I cut off 180 feet. It's on this spool here. You can see it's kind of a little bit too big for the spool, but I wanted to actually go through and make sure that it is in fact 248 and a half micro ohms per foot, uh, just so that my, you know, my calculations are you know, real world true. So uh, what I did is I hooked it up to this Lambda Gen here. Uh, I talk about the Lambda Gens a lot, I love them. Uh, this is a 20 volt, 165 amp Lambda Gen. And I've got it all hooked up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the positive and negative to just show you the uh, functionality if you're unfamiliar with it. So the Lambda Gen has a preview button where you can set a preview voltage and a preview current. So in this case, I said 20 volts or close enough to it, let's say 20 volts. Oh, it's really riding up. Is it not gonna let me? Okay, well, anyway, it's not letting me go. I can only go to 19.99 volts. It ultimately doesn't matter. Uh, and then I've set it to 85 amps. So if we turn this on right now, it's just gonna output 19.99 volts, 20 volts, because we haven't actually hooked this up. Now, <clears throat> this has a remote sense. So we're gonna be pushing a ton of current through these obviously very large current cables. And to accurately measure the voltage in just the wire here, we need to remotely sense the voltage here. So we're gonna actually be sensing our voltage there. So I hooked up my positive and my negative remote sense. And I said, okay, cool, let's test it. Now I'm gonna do this next part very quickly uh, because it's not good for the supply. I have figured out what it is, but I just wanna show it to you first. So we are rapidly jumping between the voltage and the current mode. So this is a constant voltage, constant current power supply. So whichever limit you hit, uh, it's going to stop there. And this was jumping back and forth between the two. This confused me, you know, this is a supply that I repaired. I bought this one broken for I think $125. I, I bought them as cheap as like 60, 65 bucks, but this one was a little more uh, and fixed it, I thought, and in fact I did. Uh, but you know, when you can't trust your test equipment, what do you know what's wrong here? Uh, so two things on this, one, I fixed it. Two, uh, it is a three phase supply and I'm running it with a split single phase, uh, doing a hack that I've published on YouTube or whatever, uh, it works very well. But anyway, these all casted doubt on whether or not it was the equipment or this. Now what I realized actually, you, you can't see it on camera, but I can actually feel a pulse here and this is all solid state, so it's really weird to me. And it turns out after thinking about it for a second, this is a big magnetic coil. I've wound all of this wire up. Now, of course, when I'm out testing this with the battery and it's discharging 100 and you know, whatever amps I wanna do, 94 amps, um, the shorter I clamp onto it, the more current it'll be. Uh, obviously it won't be wound up because this would get too hot. But for just characterizing it, I was like, oh, whatever, I'll just set it on top of here. So this is an analog feedback circuit. This is entirely analog controlled on the inside. And it turns out this huge electromagnet as we're trying to energize it is creating a force into here, a huge magnetic flux, uh, which this top steel cover is hardly blocking. This is uh, one of those things where people think that if you wrap something in like a thin layer of aluminum foil, you're gonna block out all of the magnetic flux and all of the even I and all that or whatever. That's not actually true. There's calculations you can do to figure out how much, how thick does the metal need to be? And you can even use things like mu metal, which is a trademark name for a very high flux resistance. Uh, uh, material you can put on. I forget exactly what the composition is, but it's just like three metals blended together or whatever. So that's the issue. And ultimately, if you take the big old spool of 180 feet of wire, which is quite heavy, and you just don't set it on the power supply, you kind of isolate them a little bit. Remember our flux is gonna go down uh, because of what we're doing. Now, 
works just fine. And you can see that with the 180 feet that I have, uh, if I set this down to the 3.9 volt discharge of the single cell, I'm gonna be discharging and charging a single cell. So if we set this to 3.9 volts here, you can see we only get it to 62 amps. Of course, I can just use smaller and smaller sections. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut every 10 feet or so off. You can see I have these marks on here every 10 feet. So I can you know, characterize the impedance in 10 foot increments. Because again, I wanna get up to the 94 amp discharge. Now, one other thing you could use uh, to do a test like this is a programmable load. So this is a BK precision programmable load. Um, it's a 30 amp load. Uh, I wanna be doing 94 amps. <clears throat> These are not cheap. This is about $1,200. I have a higher current, I'd rather I have a higher voltage one. It's a 600 volt one and it's broken. I still haven't fixed it, but it's also only 30 amps. So this one will do 120 volts max, which they don't write on here. I hate it when they don't write the maximum voltage on things. Um, but anyway, uh, this is 120 volts max, 30 amps, but only 300 watts max power. The other one is 600 volts max, 600 watts max power, and also 30 amps. So neither of those get us there. So one thing when we're doing this test is that as the battery voltage changes, the actual load current is going to change. You know, it's still gonna be a fairly accurate test. We're gonna be testing continuously from um, uh, 3.3 to 3.9 volts or thereabouts. So we'll change from, you know, 94 to like, I don't know, 80 amps of discharge. Now we are gonna just use this Lambda Gen itself to charge it because this thing can easily output the current uh, typically quad single quadrant supplies like this. This is a single quadrant. If you look at a voltage and current graph or whatever here, this supply only works in this quadrant. Uh, if you want to discharge, you need to be in these quadrants here. Um, that's more expensive. You can actually get power supplies that are called source measure units that are, can work in all four quadrants. Uh, in this case, this works in quadrant one uh, to charge the battery. And then this will be in quadrant two to discharge the battery. So, I mean, it's obviously just a passive coil of wire. And again, I'm gonna string this coil of wire up so that it can cool. Uh, four gauge wire can do a continuous current handling right around 100 amps uh, to, to rating. Um, and this is a high temperature jacket. This is rated to 105 C. So we're, we're not gonna have any problems there. <clears throat> anyway, just wanted to show you the test and just an odd goofy thing with the magnetic flux of this. You can actually see when I turn this on, if I turn the voltage a little bit higher, <clears throat> you can actually see the, uh, uh, alligator clips jump when I turn it on just because of the magnetic flux you know coming in there you actually see the whole cable tense up uh, and that was ruining the analog circuitry here you could theoretically put a very thick layer of metal there and still set it on top but th again this is just a test verification thing so now I'm going to go through and figure out uh, what the impedance is of this actually so that we can put the correct load current on it so anyway, as always, thank you for watching.